hybrid means mixing. I'm sure you know. Hybridization theory is applied for all the central atoms. Okay, what are central atoms? That means they have more than two bonds to share electrons with. And they need to share it very fairly. Number one, we take CH4, the simplest one. You, can, you should understand that CH4, carbon form four bonds with hydrogen. Each one, they share one electron with each of the hydrogen. Now, so that means that number one, there must be four orbitals on the carbon to head on overlap, okay, with the hydrogen orbitals. And other than having four orbitals, you also need to have one electron each in each of the orbital. So that, for example, this is the orbital, and then this part, so this part is the sigma bond. So this is where your electron needs to be. So each orbiter need to carry one electron each, and I need to have four orbiters. Now, if you also remember what you learned from chem bonding, VSEPR theory, that if you have four bond pairs, zero lone pair, it will not be arranged like 90 degrees to each other, but it will be a 109.5 in a tetrahedral arrangement. Now, so therefore, the second criteria for forming, basically by observing a, a molecule of a CH4, is that the orbitals, other than having one electron each, it must be arranged in a tetrahedral arrangement. Now, then the question comes, number one, the valence electronic configuration of carbon is 2s2, 2p2, meaning 2s2, 2p2, right? So that's how you will fill up. Now, so how can I have four singly filled electrons with this configuration? So something must have happened, right? Something must have made this one more electron come here so that I have four singly filled electrons. Excitation, why? Because your 2s uh, electrons are of lower energy than your 2p. So 2s and 2p. So when I do excitation, count for the four electrons one each in each one of the orbital. You need energy to push the electron from 2s to a higher energy level. So where does this energy come from? Don't worry. They will find their own energy is from the collision. Okay? So basically, excitation occurs. Now, so let me say, okay, say that we excite already. So we achieve the first uh, criteria. We have four orbitals, each one, okay, uh, have one electron, so ready to overlap. But at the same time, right, I need them to be tetrahedrally arranged, right? Now, if you look at your, okay, the 2s, uh, the 2px, 2py, and 2pz, okay, the three types of the p orbitals, they are, don't forget, they are 90 degrees to each other. How do they form the tetrahedral structure? from the arrangement, from the, the need for one electron each to be in each orbital, carbon is unable to bond with four hydrogen in the original type of orbitals they are using now, right? So what must happen? Hybridization. Hybridization is mixing of the original atomic orbitals to form new orbitals such that they can be arranged in a tetrahedral arrangement such that they can form usual sigma bond and therefore later on uh, we'll talk about the pi bonding okay so the rules of hybridization the number of orbitals that i mix i will give you back the same number of orbitals okay so i'll explain this in a while the number of electrons okay the, that means uh, hybridization does not change the valence electron it will be kept the same right uh, and hybridized orbitals are all of the same energy. That means after you mix, the hybridized orbitals are also of same energy and actually an average of what you have mixed them. And when you fill up the electronic configuration, right, uh, Kuhn's rules still apply, okay? Now, so let's look at the first type of hybridization. We label it as sp3. Now, note that the number is a superscript, okay? Not a subscript, huh? please do not write this, right? Now, what does sp3 means? Now, the s represents I use, so it's one of the two s orbitals you are using. p3 here, p to the power of 3, means you are using three of the p orbitals that carbon have. And what does carbon have? It, it have a two p orbitals, okay? So we are still talking about the valence 
shell. To make a CH4, remember I told you, you must have four orbitals singly filled. So it goes through excitation. So excitation is whereby this pair electron is pushed up to form a singly filled electron here. Okay. In that way, the carbon is excited, ready to form and head on overlap with the hydrogen. Yeah, in the same principle quantum shell. So this excitation, right, still doesn't basically go against our understanding of uh, needing too much energy because it's not from the next quantum shell. If it's from the next quantum shell, then you are using too much energy. So that, therefore, that excitation will be impossible. Okay. So if it's from the same principle quantum shell, this excitation is easily achieved. Now, number two, we know that we shouldn't be using the original orbitals. Okay. So we need to mix them up. So I'm going to use all of the, the S and the P. So therefore, using the symbol S, one S orbital, and three of the P orbitals. So S, P, three, right? So because I mixed up four orbitals, one, two, three, four, I'm going to get four equivalent orbitals as well. And each of the orbitals, I label it as a SP3, SP3. So it has a new name. Now. So it's called SP3, SP3, SP3. What does it mean? Because each orbital has one quarter of the S character. So the S orbital, right, sp spreads into four, right? The three of the P orbital also spreads into four. So it has one quarter of the S character and three quarter of the P character. Okay, I give you a real life scene. This is you. Okay, you have two friends and both are your solid best friend, right? In your hands, you only have one apple and an orange. If you have to be fair to both of them, maybe one of your suggestions is just cut half an apple and cut half an orange and give to half apple and half orange each, right? Now, what if when you cut, right, one side of the apple has more seed? Your friend don't like it. Your friend starts to find problem with it. So to share evenly with these two best friends, you will take the apple and orange, mash it up, okay? And then evenly distribute so that each glass is evenly distributed with the same number of apple and the orange content. Okay. Now, similarly to here, I need to form four bonds with uh, the hydrogen, four hydrogens. And I need to make sure that I must be fair because I have four hydrogens, four partners. So carbon, when it's very evenly arranged, it is basically this molecule will be the most stable in energy form. So you need to understand in life, right? We want to achieve stability and stability is achieved by balancing. Okay. So therefore, right? If you have four hydrogens, you want to be equivalent to all of them. Now, in order to be equivalent using the non-equivalent uh, one of the two S and three of the two P orbitals that carbon has, it will want to mesh up the four orbitals, because they have four hydrogen to bond with, don't forget. So you will mesh up one S and the three P, okay? Mesh up four orbitals to give you four hybrid new orbitals. So that it is going to use these new orbitals, which is equal, equivalent, same in energy, same in size, same in shape, to form uh, and head on overlap with each of the hydrogen such that the bond strength, bond length is all the same throughout. Equal bond length and bond strength is what you achieve for. So to achieve this, you need to use same orbitals, which to achieve same orbital, you need to create new orbitals from your original orbital. And we call this orbital hybrid orbitals. When you mix, right, the energy is the average of the two. Okay, so the hybrid orbitals is slightly lower energy than the 2p orbitals, slightly higher energy than the 2s. It's the average, so it's having an energy in between the two. Same thing as for the shape. The shape of the hybrid orbitals will carry the feature of s and p. Now, so while s is non-directional, it basically doesn't point to particularly X, Y, Z. It lies in all direction. So it's non-directional. P lies in a particular direction. So when you hybridize and mix it, the directional nature of P is gone. So that allows the hybrid orbitals to be arranged tetrahedrally. Okay? So it is like, it is like four balloons. 
and you give it a good shake, right? Remember what I showed you before, it will naturally occupy a tetrahedral model. Okay, so therefore, uh, a hybrid orbitals when we draw is um, like a one big loop and a one smaller loop. Now I have four orbitals. These four orbitals will occupy in a tetrahedron. So each of the hybrid orbitals called sp3 hybrid orbitals, sometimes they will label a two. This two is the principal quantum number. Okay, so we have used two s and two p to mix. So this is a two, three, uh, sp3 hybrid orbital. So this hybrid orbital, each one have one electron. You can see one electron, one electron, one electron. This is to signify the electrons. And it overlaps with the hydrogen. Okay, so the hydrogen comes close and overlap with it. Hydrogen comes close, overlap, come close and overlap, come close and overlap. So where are the bonding electrons? They are sharing the electrons in this uh, part of the orbital here. Of course, the more effective this overlap, the stronger the bonds. Right, so everything learned for chem bonding still applies here. Now, so therefore, it accounts for the shape. Why is it tetrahedral? The bond angle is 109.5, okay? And it accounts for equivalent bond length and bond strength. Now, so we have talked about sp3 hybridization. Let's go on to two more. So in your A-level syllabus, you only need to know sp3, sp2, and sp. Are there more? Yes, because once you use up your S and the tree of the P orbital, what is the next orbital? In the period tree, you have the D type orbital. So if you need to form five bond pairs like PCL5, then you not only use S and P orbitals, you also use your D. So with PCL5, it's actually S, P, 3, D. Okay, so never mind, chuck that aside. Let's talk about what you need to know. Okay, so what you need to know is the sp3, sp2, and sp, just around carbon. But bear in mind, hybridization is not only for carbon, it can be for any central atom. All right, but what they can ask you is just limited to sp, sp2, and sp3. Okay, so why is sp2? Like I told you just now, I use one of the 2s orbital and two, which I spell out, two of the 2p orbitals of carbon to mix. Okay, why? Because now, Look at ethene now, okay? SP2 hybridization is to describe the carbon of ethene. Now, can you see this carbon? These two carbons are equivalently surrounded by three partners, okay? One, two, and three, okay? If you look at the other side, also one, two, and three, right? So each carbon individually, the central atom is the two carbons here because they are bonded to more than one atom. So they need to be fair. When they have more than one friend, they need to be fair. Okay, when they only have one friend, uh, then don't need to use hybridization. Just use your original orbital to overlap can already. Okay, so hybridization uh, theory just applies to central atom. So in order to be fair to the three surrounding atoms of each, that each carbon is surrounded by, you need three equal equivalent hybrid orbitals, right? So the same thing will occur. You need to excite. You need to make sure this pair is not there. You need, you need basically three singly uh, field hybrid orbitals, right? So excitation will always occur first, right? When they get excited, they, they have kinetic energy, right? So basically the electron will be here, okay? So therefore, depending on what kind of, how many atoms you have, how many partners you have, okay? You will basically use the number of the original orbitals to mix such that you get the equivalent number of hybrid orbitals. So since I have three partners, Okay, I need three hybridized orbitals and therefore I will use always, huh? you always start from an S and then two of the P, right? So one of them is not used and the one that is not used, right, is what we call an unhybridized P orbital, right? Because it is from the 2P. So this is an unhybridized 2P orbital. The energy level is kept at the same level, right? So there's no lowering of energy for this untouched. We don't touch it for hybridization. So what do we touch? We touch the two of the P, right? And therefore, to create, okay, three hybrid orbitals. And the name of these hybrid orbitals is called SP2 because we mix one S and two P. So SP2. And each of them are equivalent in energy, right? So SP2 hybrid orbitals are looking like a bit of the same shape as your SP3. Okay, later you'll see the difference, a little bit different. Okay, so with one big loop and one smaller loop, right? 
So this is sp2. Now, since I have three of the hybrid orbitals, these hybrid orbitals will arrange themselves. Okay, let's look at the diagram here. These hybrid orbitals, look at the gray diagram, will arrange themselves in a trigonal planar arrangement. Just imagine you have three blown up balloons, you tie them at the center with a knot, give you a light shake, what do they arrange themselves? Three electron region. Range in a trigonal planar arrangement, 120, right? So this is not achievable by like if I use the original S and the original P because the original P will be 90 degrees to each other. So it must be the hybrid orbitals that are arranged in the trigonal planar manner. Now what about the one unhybridized P orbital? It will be lying along its original axis. So let's say this is the PY, so it will be lying at the PY. So the X and the Z axis, right, are all, the P orbitals are all used up. So when we use up, right, it kind of not lie on the axis, but it lies in between. So remember the nature of the direction is gone, but it still encompasses certain property about that orbital. So that trigonal planar, it will be on the X and the Y plane, where you, because you have used up the P, X and the P, Y orbital, okay, to mix, to give you the sp2 orbitals, right? Let's talk about how this overlapping uh, of etin will look like, right? So look at it carefully. I'm going to draw it over the diagram. So each etin, right, will have, okay, you see one big loop, one small loop here. So one big loop, the nucleus will be surrounded, okay? The nucleus will be tied at the center, okay? So this part is the nucleus, yeah? Now, so one big loop, one small loop, three of them in a trigonal planar manner. So to show you the sigma bond with this hydrogen, right? Let me head on overlap with the hydrogen here. So hydrogen because it's not terminal, right? So it's still using its 1s, 1s spherical orbitals. So this part of the overlap is the head on overlap, which is the sigma bonds. Okay, so that's what the diagram is showing you. Now between the two carbons here, this sigma bond, because this is a sp2 hybridized, this also uses his sp2 hybridized orbital to form another overlap head on overlap with this carbon right so therefore these three bonds are arranged in a 120 arrangement okay now what about the pi bonds now if you learn, remember what you learned from chem bonding pi bonds must be a sideway overlap by using only p orbitals. So how to form sideways overlap? They must be parallel, side by side, in the same direction. So do you understand why you can't use hybrid orbitals to form pi bonds? Because once you hybridize it, the direction will be gone. Okay, you do not want the direction to be gone. You want them to be locked at the same direction. So they both of them are using the py and the py orbital such that they can go through the side ways overlap right to form the pi bond so to form the pi bond it is using the original pp orbital overlap so this part which is very little overlap okay the pi bond is not as effective as the sigma bond okay i hope you also remember that that's why pi bond is weaker okay than a sigma bond right so because the area that you overlap is smaller okay so sideways overlap huh? only formed by pi bonds so in conclusion, number one, sigma bonds is by any orbitals. It can be the original. It, it must form the head-on overlap. It can be the hybrid. Original orbitals is by the terminal atoms. Central atoms, you must use hybrid orbitals. High bonds only uses p orbitals so that can, they can form sideways overlap. In your syllabus, pi bond is only pp orbital overlap. Now let's go on to the last one, the sp hybridization. Now to form the, to use uh, sp hybrid orbitals will mean that sp, you count, only two hybrid orbital, right? Will mean that you have two different partners per uh, central atom, right? So what kind of hybridization will take place because you need to have two different partners one on the left one on the right you realize that this will be arranged in a 180 bond angle okay so to form two different partners same thing after excitation you grab the 2s one of the 2s and one of the 2p and that remains 
two of the unhybridized p orbital ready for any pi bonds to be formed. Okay, these are for the sigma bonds or for lone pair of electrons, right? So the hybrid orbitals are for sigma bonds or lone pair. Since I mix one of the 2s orbital and one of the 2b orbital, the average energy okay, will be in between, the hybrid orbitals will be in between the average of 2s and 2b orbitals. The shape will look a bit more spherical because now your s orbital is spread only into two orbitals. So half the s character here and half the s character here with half the p and half the p. Okay, now we talk about the shape later on. So hybrid orbitals, I only have two. I only have two partners to form two sigma bonds with. So therefore, the two hybrid orbitals are going to be arranged in a linear manner. Two unhybridized p orbitals are going to stand at their original y and, for example, the z axis. So this will be the, for example, I use the p x to form the hybrid orbital. Let's talk about the bonding with hydrogen. So using is one of the hybrid orbitals, the hey on overlap with one s orbital of the hydrogen here. And then the other partner it needs to overlap with is the carbon, the other carbon. So it also uses one of the hybrid orbital to overlap with the other carbon. So this is the sigma bond, right? So this is for one carbon. Now, the other carbon also the repeat the same, right? So the other side, you have one hydrogen to form one single bond. So we have accounted for all the sigma bonds. So what about the pi bonds? Now the pi bonds, right, um, basically forms on top and surrounding the sigma bonds so you count this as one electron then one electron group because how can you separate into two electron group when you have only one atom to share okay the multiple bonds with so these pi bonds are added on top of the sigma bonds and they do not create another electron region it is the same electron region so therefore your one of the one set of the p orbital overlap laterally okay parallel to the p orbitals that is facing pi bond sidewalks overlap the other p orbital that is lying along this axis will overlap with the other p orbital that forms and explain why you have the two pi bonds shape and your bond angle around each of the carbon the central atom will be 180 because there are only two regions of spaces around the central carbon right so that's hybridization number one hybridization we need to mix we need to mix because the central atom needs to be fair it basically is for the central atom the original orbitals of carbon is the s and the p orbitals okay from quantum shell number two right which are not suitable for forming more than one bonds so we need to mix so you recognize the hybridization state by number one, okay, counting the number of electron regions. So for example, if you have four bond pairs, zero lone pair, it is four electron region. So you need four orbitals, which means you start from S and then you need to add three more P, okay? So it's SP3. If you have three bond pairs, three electron regions, uh, three bond pairs, no lone pair. So again, uh, the bond pairs, um, I can include sigma bond, pi bond. So sigma bond and pi bond, a double bond, you count as one electron region. So you look at the atoms you are bonded to, okay? To decide the bond pairs, the number of bonding electron pairs, you look at the number of partner atoms you have, the terminal atoms you have. To look at the lone pair, you really need to assign whether there is any lone pair on the carbon, right? So if it's three electron region, you will need three orbitals and therefore it is a sp2 okay well seems like spp the political group okay anyway sp2 square okay maybe they should come up with this name instead okay anyway with a sp2 you have a p that is unhybridized right so remember there's one more orbital that is not separated it's actually standing on top and below the nucleus as well right so just that it's drawn separated so that you can see the difference okay in the arrangement now with two electron regions two electron regions uh, no lone pair it is definitely linear right so you only need two uh, hybrid orbitals 
So it is a sp hybrid orbital. And with sp hybrid orbital, there are two, two unhybridized p orbital that basically will be surrounding the nucleus as well. Confirm and guarantee chop is number one. When it is a sp3, your bond angle around the central atom must be 109.5. The arrangement must be tetrahedral. So hybrid orbitals affects the arrangement. This goes hand in hand without any change. Okay, so sp2 must be trigonal planar. The bond angle will be 120, right? Because you have three orbitals arranged as far as possible. sp2 orbitals linear, the bond angle will be 120. So the hybridization explains two things. Um, the, the bond strength, later on we'll talk about this, and then the bond angle and the arrangement of the uh, electron regions. The other way that you check whether you get the correct hybridization is to look at the number of pi bonds. With, with sp2 for carbon, eh, for carbon only, the number of pi bonds, because you have one p orbital, right? So between, okay, two carbons, you definitely have a pp orbital overlap. So the number of p will tell you the number of pi bonds, okay, per carbon atom. Eh. So the number of p here, okay, remaining eh, is two p orbitals. So per carbon atom, within two carbons, they are going to form two pi bonds, right? So that's another way to look at the hybridization. Draw the lone pair first huh? because the electron regions, it not only include the bond pair, which is looking at the number of atoms that you are bonded to, it also has to include the lone pair electron. Then you count the electron region, right? Let's go through all the carbon uh, hybridization state, okay? So carbon with four bonds, single bonds, you have four orbitals to overlap with the four sigma bonds. There's no pi bonds. So no pi bonds means, pi bonds means uh, you need to reserve, okay, an unhybridized p orbital. So this carbon is a sp3. The second carbon where label number two, right? You can see that it has three electron density. Okay, just look at the nearest atom. So one partner, two partner and three partners. Are there any lone pair? No lone pair. So it is a sp2. Check out, double check, you have one unhybridized p orbital for the pi bond. Okay, so this is a sp2. Now, um, look at this carbon number three. So how many regions? One, two, three. So again, no lone pair. Okay, because carbon, why no lone pair? Four bonds max out already. No lone pair. So three electron dense, uh, three electron regions. So this carbon is a hybrid orbital of sp2 again. Double check, does it have one single double bond? Yes, it does. Okay, remember the p orbital is reserved for the pi bond. So you have one pi bond. Okay, so basically carbon with one pi bond, three sigma bonds is always sp2. Um, now let's look at, Carbon number four, how many partners? One, two, so it's sp, no lone pair because four bond pairs max out already. One, two, three, four, okay? So therefore this sp, double check, sp hybridized should have two p's that's unhybridized. Huh? So you have two pi bonds here and one sigma bond, so it's confirmed, okay? So this carbon is a sp. Okay, nitrogen here, one lone pair, so one electron group. And then one more electron density here that it shares with carbon. So count the number of neighboring atom and the lone pair. So two here, right? So this nitrogen is also sp hybridized orbital. So you double check sp hybridized. The two p orbitals will be forming pi bonds with the other side. So that is correct. So these two are both sp hybridized. Okay, that's why the arrangement is 180 Okay, around the center. Now, part B, let's do this also. Okay, starting from this nitrogen. Okay, nitrogen is a bit harder because you need to count. Three bond pairs must have one lone pair, right? So how many groups? The number of atoms, one, two, three, plus the lone pair, four groups. You need four of the sp3 hybrid orbitals for nitrogen. Okay, so nitrogen here is sp3 hybridized, right? Now this carbon here, 
okay how many groups one two so therefore as p double check with the number of pi bonds should have two pi bonds right so check check okay the answer is confirmed correct in fact this is also sp hybridized carbon okay um carbon number four one two three one two three four four atoms right no lone pairs four atoms therefore this carbon is a sp3 okay carbon number five one two three three groups meaning you need three equivalent hybrid orbitals so one two three okay sp2 double check with a sp2 there must be a unhybridized p orbital that is forming one pi bond so the number of unhybridized p orbital will reflect the number of pi bonds okay so this carbon is a sp2 right last nitrogen there so nitrogen one two three three bond pair or one lone pair okay so what is the hybridization state count the number of atoms first one or two right two groups of atoms with one lone pair so therefore arrange trigonal planar three um groups of electron region you need so three hybrid orbitals you need sp2